A female gang of watch thieves known as Rolex Zippers are back in town. In recent times, watch companies are getting the wrong attention too, from thieves, criminals, and other negative people. In this video, we will look at how the negative activities are taking place of people who prey upon Rolex and other luxury items and luxury watch owners and the rise of thieves across the European continent. But before we start, please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any future videos. Rolex rippers struck again when two Eastern European accented women pretending to be cleaners stole a valuable watch from a resident's wrist after knocking on the front door. Police have warned other people to beware of distraction thefts after the timepiece grab in Trenchard Avenue, Wendover. The attractive honey trap fraudsters are now likely to be more active as temperatures soar and short sleeve weather returns to Britain, leaving watches easily exposed. Describing the Wendover theft, Thames Valley Police said, on answering their front door, the person turned to get a piece of paper and the women followed them into the property. One of the women wrote a number on the piece of paper and the other hugged the person with force before they left the property. The person then realized their watch had been stolen from their wrist and they had been left with bruising. Police described the two women as white in their early 20s and approximately 5 feet 9 inch tall. They were wearing similar dark or black coats with dark trousers and wore white lace-up trainers, which looked brand new. Both spoke with Eastern European accents. They are thought to have allegedly struck more than 50 times last year. In January, a 64-year-old man was taken to hospital with serious injuries after being attacked by two thieves who snatched his Rolex watch. He was badly hurt in the robbery in South Coast Road, Peacehaven, said Sussex police. It came after several forces, including Sussex, warned before Christmas about Rolex Ripper thieves operating across the South and West England, preying on obviously wealthy OAPs for their watches. In the December alert, police urged wealthy elderly men about women strangers, sometimes dressed as nurses. The Rolex rippers target wealthy OAPs leaving post golf clubs or outside upmarket stores like Waitrose, checking to see if they are wearing the expensive timepieces on their wrists. Then they move in closer and slip the Rolex into their handbag without their victim twigging till the women have sauntered off. In one police force area alone, Hampshire next door to Sussex, more than 30 thefts have been reported in the last 16 months with all the victims targeted because they are wearing high-value Rolex watches. But there may be many more elderly men who have been robbed but are too embarrassed to come forward and admit they were duped. Some could be terrified their wives might learn how they were open to chat up lines from women strangers. It's thought the women, thought to be Eastern Europeans, have mended watches worth more than £1 million in the last year, with many more thefts reported in Gloucestershire, Dorset, Sussex, Devon, and Cornwall. Dorset police issued CCTV pictures taken in October of two women aged about 40 and 20 with dark hair and Eastern European accents who embrace their victims and take the designer watches using sleight of hand techniques. Hampshire police said some victims reported the women claimed to be doing a survey or a petition. They often use a clipboard as a prop to make themselves appear genuine. Once the survey has been completed, the suspects often compliment the victim and try to embrace them, with reports suggesting they may try to hug or kiss them. It is during this time that the item, usually a watch, is removed using slate of hand techniques. The suspects are then spotted leaving the area in a vehicle. The desired target locations seem to be near golf courses and supermarket car parks. However, some offenses have also taken place outside residential properties. Derek Freestone, a retired wine merchant from Birchington, Kent was en route to the Goodwood Festival of Speed motor racing event with a friend when they stopped in Emsworth at 3.15 p.m. on July 7 last year to pick up medication from a pharmacy in the town. He was sitting in the passenger seat of his friend's Mercedes, parked in the picturesque fishing town of Emsworth in Hampshire when two women knocked on the window and asked him to sign a petition for a diff school. No sooner had he done so than one of them lunged throwing her arms around the 77-year-old as she tried to kiss him. Shocked, he barely gave a thought to the second lady, who had been shaking his left hand. Only after he pushed the first woman away and shut the car door did he realize his gold Rolex, bought 20 years ago for £4,500 but now worth £12,500, was gone. I jumped out and shot round the car but there was no sign of them. It happened so quickly, says Miss Freestone, still reeling from the robbery three months later. It hit me in the pit of my stomach. What the hell have we done to our country that this can happen in broad daylight? He said the two women were dark-haired, one in her late 20s, one late 30s, and around 5 feet 5 inches and 5 feet 7 inches tall. Within a day, the gang had moved on to their next target, Alan Bruce, 63, who lives at the edge of Ferndown Golf Club and was 7 miles away in Wimborne, Dorset, when he was robbed at about 11 a.m. on July 15. Having parked his Audi TT Sport, he was approached by two women carrying a clipboard in the town center. 
and bring in a new actor. It's Jamad's turn to steal some tips. He estimates both were in their late 20s or early 30s. The taller one was in jeans and a dark top, the shorter one in a long, brightly colored dress, says Mr. Bruce, a divorced father of two who frequently travels for his job as a marine engineer. I picked up accents and I would say they were either Albanian or Bulgarian. They said, we're doing a petition for a deep center and would I sign a document? I said, no problem. Left-handed and wearing his 14,000 pounds gold Yachtmaster Rolex on the same hand, he signed the petition. Then the younger woman said she loved his aftershave and asked where it was from. To the need for a criminal justice system to be viewed as a deterrent. To his astonishment, she then asked him for a cuddle. Alarmed, he instinctively put his right hand in his back pocket to protect his wallet and pushed the woman with his left hand before walking away. It was only as he did so that he realized his Rolex was missing. As well for the entertainment oh. district. The judge sent a monetary bond and ordered the women to stay away from the South Beach Entertainment. It's double clasp having been prized off without him feeling a thing. One elderly man in Chandler's Ford had his Rolex stolen after he was approached by two women in a Waitrose car park. They asked him to sign a petition relating to children he'd obliged and was hugged by one of the women. He later discovered that his watch was missing. In October, a retired pilot told how he fell victim to a female gang dubbed the Rolex Rippers for preying on men with pricey watches. Michael Perry had his 15,000 pounds watch stolen by a woman who asked him to sign a petition and then grabbed him and repeatedly shouted sex to create a distraction. Didn't seem to sit well with grooms. Yep. All nightclubs in the city of Miami Beach. And I'll prepare it. In November, Gloucestershire police told how Rolex rippers offered an OAP, a sex rom, and stole his watch worth thousands. The elderly victim was approached by two women strangers in Summerford Keynes near Sirencester. They engaged him in conversation before offering him sex in exchange for money, while holding on to his arms, said detectives. The pair left the scene after he managed to free his arms, and he realized his Rolex worth thousands of pounds had been stolen. Police said the women were described as being Eastern European. Hampshire police issued the following advice. When you meet a fundraiser in person, check the what these women looked like down to the tattoos they had on their bodies and their piercings. Miami Beach police found two women matching those their credentials. Street collectors should wear a visible ID badge. Most fundraising materials should feature a charity's name, a registration number, and a landline phone number. If in doubt, ask for more information. A genuine fundraiser should be happy to answer your questions. And here we are at the end of the video. Hope it was informative for you. There's a lack of consequences. Chief Moore says the U.S. attorney is now joining in efforts to prosecute these suspects. Stay alert and share the video with your known ones to get them alert if they are owning these luxury items. If you enjoyed the video and want to get future video updates from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.